Now that we have solved for the reaction forces, we can move forward and start figuring out what is happening inside of this beam. Now, we can use the method of sections to place an imaginary cut in our beam and analyze the internal resultant loadings at that location. But before we show how this is done, let's actually take a look at the sign convention that will be used for the remainder of this example. A distributed load that pulls the beam up will be considered positive, and this is denoted by W of X. The sign convention for shear force and moment will both depend on what side of the beam we place our imaginary cut on. If the cut is placed on the right side of the beam, a positive shear force will actually point down, and a positive moment will, ro will rotate the beam in the counterclockwise direction. However, if the imaginary cut is placed on the left side of a beam, then a positive shear, point, shear force will point in the positive direction, or up, and a positive moment will rotate clockwise. Now let's go ahead and analyze this beam by looking at its two unique regions, region AB and region BC. First, in region AB, I'm going to place an imaginary cut a distance x from point A. Then, we will look at the forces required to ensure that the structure remains in static equilibrium. By leaving the distance to the cut as the variable x, we can see how the internal resultant loading changes throughout the entire section AB. On the face of the cut, we need a shear force as well as a moment to ensure this beam will be remain in static equilibrium. Then, for region AB, we can sum the forces in the y direction and sum the moments about the cut section to determine the values of the internal shear force and the moment m that are required in order to keep this beam in static equilibrium. As a general note, I would like to highlight that when I drew the shear force and moment on the cut section, I drew both of them in the positive direction according to our sign convention that we just previously discussed. The end result of this process is that we find out in region AB we have a constant shear force of 15 kilonewtons and a moment that will vary linearly from a negative 127.5 kilonewton meters as a function of x. Next up, we can actually go forward and repeat this process, but this time, we'll begin looking at region BC. First, we can place a cut in the middle of region BC that is a distance x from point A. Then we can determine the magnitude of the internal shear force and moment at that point that are required to keep the beam in static equilibrium. You will also see that I replaced the distributed load with its resultant loading once this new free body diagram is set, we can sum the forces in the y direction, as well as the moments about the cut, and this allows us to determine the magnitude of the shear force and the moment that will keep the beam in static equilibrium. So, in this region, shear force will vary linearly with x, and the moment will actually follow the curve of a second order polynomial. Now that region BC has been analyzed, we know the shear force and moment at every single point within beam AC. A useful way to illustrate this information is with shear force and moment diagrams. Now as we discussed before, the shear force will be constant within region AB and then it will actually decrease to zero at point C. Furthermore, the moment will decrease linearly in region AB and then according to a second order polynomial in region BC until it equals zero at point C. With all of this information, we can analyze the bending and shear stress that are present within this beam and ensure that it is properly designed to handle its loads.